Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Clemartin from CodeOpinion.com. And when you're working with an event driven architecture, it's important that you have consistency when you're making state changes to your database and that you're publishing events to your message broker so that other services can consume them. A common pattern for handling this consistency issue is the outbox pattern, but that's not the only pattern. There's also the listen to yourself pattern. How does it work? Does it work? Does it really solve this problem? Let's take a look. Thanks to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. The listen to yourself pattern is trying to solve this problem. When we make some type of state change to our database, let's say it's saving an order to our database. We then need to publish an order placed event to our message broker so that other consumers can consume that message and do other things that are potentially part of workflows. The problem in lies is we made that state change, we've saved our order to our database, but then maybe we fail to publish to our message broker. We don't have consistency. We need to guarantee that when we make that state change, we also publish the relevant events. Now there's different ways of dealing with this, but this is about the listen to yourself pattern. So how does it work? How does it solve this problem? So what happens is when we first get our request to place our order, rather we don't make a state change. What we're doing instead is we're publishing our order placed event. We're doing that first and then hence the name listen to yourself. We then become our own consumer of that message that we publish that event. From there, we get our order placed event and then we can make our state change to our database. So did the listen to yourself pattern really solve our issue? What we've really done is we kind of flipped the order of operation. Now, instead, we're publishing our event first and then after that, we're making our state change. But everything's about trade-offs and here's some other things you need to consider if you're going down this road thinking about this pattern. So the first issue is with events and publish subscribe. You have zero consumers, many different consumers for an event. So that means that when we publish that order placed event to our message broker, we have essentially three consumers. Our publisher turned into a consumer. And let's say we have two other consumers. We're all consuming them potentially concurrently. This means that let's say the very first consumer at the very top here, let's say its job is to send out a confirmation email. And when it does so, this is all within the same logical boundary. It reaches out to the database to get the order details, but they're not there because we essentially had a race condition between consumers and our publisher, which is also its consumer listening to itself, hasn't even placed the order yet. So that's problem one is kind of the order of operations and saying we've done something, but we really haven't. Number two is because we flipped the order of this, that loses all our guarantee. We've said something's happened, the order was placed, but it hasn't. What happens if we have an issue based on validation, whatever the case may be, where we actually can't even save that state? Now we published an event saying something's happened, but we actually can't even fulfill that because it can never actually be saved as state. Now you could make the argument that it's a fad event and it contains all the data, all the details so that other consumers like that email confirmation wouldn't need to reach out to the database. But that doesn't solve the issue of the publisher, which is now the consumer listening to itself from failing to process that message. The state of the system when it processes it could be very different from when it published it, even if it was validating before it made that publish. So then you may think, well, maybe it's kind of just about semantics. Instead of really saying that the order placed event because we didn't really place the order. It was really the user requesting to place an order. So maybe we can kind of change the naming saying a place order was requested and that's the event we're gonna publish. Now the issue here I think you can get into is kind of forcing the idea of events and using events when really in a situation like this, you probably want a command and there's differences between events and commands. Now this distinction is important because commands are about invoking behavior. They're about doing something. I want to do something. An event is saying, I have already done something. Something has happened. In terms of ownership, commands are owned by their consumer. Events, on the other hand, are owned by their publisher. With a consumer, really important here, because this really makes the distinction, is that with a command, you're gonna have a single consumer that's gonna handle that command, that message. Not zero, not two, one, absolutely one. With events, because you're decoupling producer and consumer, the, the producer doesn't care or know who's actually consuming it. There could be zero, there could be many different consumers. Who sends a command? There could be many different senders. Who publishes an event? There's one publisher when something occurs within that logical boundary. In naming, it's important. Your commands are generally verbs, actions you wanna perform, and events, as we're mentioning, it's kind of past tense, it's what has happened. So is the listen to yourself pattern terrible? 
No, not at all. It has its use case, which is when you're publishing an event that something has happened, but it's not necessarily related to state that you need to perform some action to really indicate that something happened. If a user requests something and you're calling it really like a requested event or something of that nature, yes, it has happened. That's what they're doing. Something has been requested. But if you had multiple different consumers, there's no order of operation or some expectation that something else has happened. They each uh, operate independently, they consume the message, they're not dependent on each other. Here's another example of where listening to yourself pattern actually makes sense, it's pretty common, is when you're event sourcing. We have our publisher here, it needs to make some state change. Well, that state change is in the form of event being persisted to our event store. That's the point of truth, our events. So we persist that event, and then from there, our event store, it has subscription capabilities. We can then consume the same event that we've just saved, that we've appended to our, our event stream. We can consume that event, and then we can potentially do some type of translation where we then wanna publish that event for other service boundaries, for other services to consume. This could be a Cubase broker, could be something like Kafka as the example, and then that's when you're publishing those message. So our event store is the point of truth for all our events. We're listening to ourselves via a subscription that it provides. Then we can translate that uh, message into something more of an outside event that we can then publish to some type of Cubase broker or something like Kafka. So if you're not event sourcing and you don't wanna use the listen to yourself pattern, what are your options? Well, here are two. It's kind of a very similar idea, which is the outbox pattern. And I'm gonna have a link to a video I've done in the past about this pattern at the very end of this video, but a quick summary is that when we're making our state change, we persist that to our database, but at the same time, we're also gonna persist that actual event in the same database, likely serialize it, and then separately, we'll have some other process, some other thread, pull that information, that event out of our database, and that way, both were persisted together atomically, like within the same transaction, and then after the fact, we can have that publisher then publish that message to our message broker. Another common solution is having a fallback. I'll have a link to a video that I've done about McDonald's using this technique, which is really just having a fallback. So when your producer saves its state to the database, needs to publish that event, that or replace event to our message broker, and that fails, what we have then is we push that event data to some other durable storage. In the case of McDonald's, this was DynamoDB. And then from there, they had some other retry mechanism, which was an AWS Lambda that then fetched that data out of that durable storage, likely serializing and deserializing it, and then it was publishing it to our message broker, and it was that retry mechanism. I think the listen to yourself pattern has value, but in the right context. I don't think this works at all when really what you want is a command. You wanna put a message on a queue saying, do something, rather than saying something happened, but it didn't really happen because you need to listen to it yourself first and make that state change, and then you have other consumers expecting that what happened really did happen, Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Maybe you have a race condition. Maybe the yourself that has to consume it actually fails. Well, then that means it really didn't happen. If you enjoy topics like this and you'd love to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design and topics like this, and you have questions, opinions, or you wanna answer somebody else's question, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.